Welcome to K Passionate. I'm your host, KP, a marine biologist with quite a lot of experience working with marine mammals like sea otters. Last time on my channel, we kicked off a mini series about animal senses, starting with eyesight. This week, we're taking a deeper dive into the sense that scientists agree is the most intimate and intricate one that we have, touch. But before we do that, this is your weekly reminder to hit that like and subscribe button. Head down to the descriptions below if you want to know more about the sources that we're using for this video. I just want to rub your belly. Just a belly rub. Thank you. Good girl. In my opening spiel, I mentioned that the sense of touch is the most developed of all of the five senses. In fact, there is a significant body of research that suggests that touch is vital to survival. And one reason for that is pain. Pain is an indicator that tells the person, or the animal in this case, that it's time to change direction. <laughs> it's the reason we pull our hand away from something that's hot or sharp. But it's not the only reason that touch is vital to life. Touch is also a universal communicator. Think about hugs, kisses, high fives, taps on the shoulder. High five, good. And even negative communications like pushing, shoving, biting. Have you seen my previous videos where I taught Joey the sea otter how to spin? You might have noticed that when he gets frustrated with the behavior, he tends to grab and attack the target pole. Spin. Okay, yes? No. Oh my goodness. No grabbies! <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're a little out of control right now. There's no need to panic, Joseph. <laughs> That's communication via touch. He's showing me by biting and holding onto the target pole that he's frustrated with that behavior. You're all right, you got it, you got this. No, no biteys, no biteys. In fact, touch is a primary means of communication across many animals. One of my favorite examples of this is when Katmai thought that I was trying to steal her ice treats in this clip. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ma'am. <laughs> Even though I was just trying to rub her belly. It's okay. I didn't take it personally because she does the exact same thing to Mac. <laughs> she, that's rude. Oh my gosh, so rude, Catmite. <laughs> Humans have an extremely well-developed sense of touch. So much so that in scientific communities, humans are known as the touch experts. But believe it or not, sea otters are even better. Take a closer look at their paws. They're extremely dexterous and just packed with nerve endings. That's because, like we explained in our last video on sight, which you can catch by clicking the link right up here, aquatic animals tend to have pretty poor eyesight, especially at night or if the water is very murky or turbulent. So they have to rely on something other than vision to find their food. And their food is usually things like clams, mussels, abalone, often buried under the ocean floor, not visible at all. However, studies have shown that their prey consumption is extremely high. This makes sense. After all, they need to consume about a quarter of their body weight every single day. Okay. 
I'm gonna cut to the chase and tell you just how incredible a sea otter's sense of touch is. There was a study that I've linked in the descriptions down below that showed that sea otter's sense of touch is just as powerful as humans, but much faster at discriminating objects. The study involved an otter named Selkie. The experiment essentially had Selkie reach into a window and blind touch two different textured items. One object was smooth and the other very slightly rippled. Then she had to choose the correct item. If she chose correctly, she was rewarded with a huge amount of clams and shrimp. If she got it wrong, she still got the occasional reward, but it was just far less than getting the correct answer. Sort of like you can visualize when I was training Joey how to spin. When he spun, he got a huge handful of fish. He's like, I stole it in the first place. It doesn't really matter. Good boy! Did it! Yes! And when he didn't do it correctly, but he was still being patient with me, I might give him one or two. Spin. Good. Thank you for the calm. They did the same experiment on humans, and on average, it took a human about two to three seconds to discern the correct object. But it took Selkie the sea otter just 100 milliseconds. That's a fraction of a second. It's practically instantaneous. I'm quoting one of my cited sources here when I say that the sea otter responded about 30 fold faster than the human, regardless of difficulty level. And that kind of makes sense. If you're 50 feet below the surface of the ocean or 15 meters digging around in the bottom, it's cold, it's dark, you're trying to find as many clams as possible before heading back up to the surface to have your snack. You want to have a good sense of touch. She's just collecting little pieces of ice and jamming them in her pocket. While not as scientific a test as the one that I just described to you, I'm reminded of the time that I gave Kunik a brush enrichment item. Check out how curious she is. You can actually see how stimulated she is by this simple enrichment item. Goodness. This is furthering my suspicion that you've never had this before. Does it feel funny? What is it? Feels funny. Sea otters also have another well-developed tactile form of sense. They're whiskers. Can you put whiskers on me? I can try. Now I'm pretty excited to talk about whiskers because we cannot touch on that without talking about my favorite animal of all time, the king of whiskers, the walrus. Uh oh. <laughs> whiskers is a bit of a misnomer when it comes to these types of animals. They're actually known as vibrissae. Each one has a blood supply and thousands of nerve endings. And they're called vibrissae because they can actually detect vibrations. Watch here as I feed Jessica seal. Sadly, a gunshot wound left Jessica mostly blind. However, she can easily find her food thanks to her vibrissae. That's because their whiskers can detect things like hydrodynamic trails of fish swimming in the water. Not only that, but it's been scientifically proven that seals can not only detect whether or not there is a fish, but what kind of fish it is and whether it's even worth pursuing. Walruses do something very similar, but not necessarily with fish. Their primary food source is bivalves, things like clams, mussels, pretty much the same thing that sea otters eat. They'll use those vibrissae to detect those clams and determine size, shape, even species. Hey! Now, because sea otters have a similar diet, it's safe to assume that they do something similar to walruses. In fact, wild sea otter whiskers have been shown to have wear on them. 
especially in soft sediment habitats where clams and similar bivalves are hunted. So it does appear that sea otters can use their whiskers to detect the water currents from their prey. They also appear to use their vibrissae to navigate in murky water that's sometimes stirred up by their actions of digging up the ocean floor. So that's a bit about how marine mammals use touch to navigate, hunt, and capture their prey. But what about their other senses? What about taste? If you're a fan of this channel, then you probably know the adorable little eating meeps that Mac and Quatsi do when they're eating their clams. Does that mean that they enjoy what they're tasting? No. Find out on our next deeper dive. In the meantime, head down to the comments and let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time on a deeper dive. Cheers. Do you like it? It's funny. Oh, it's funny. It's funny. oh my god, this is the most beautiful. <laughs> okay. Toy. Okay, here, just right. Don't. What does it feel like? It's on your head. Can you put whiskers on me? I can try.